Well, greetings, Mr. Colazar's class. Today we're going to start into chemical reactions, chapter 9. This is going to be, uh, we've got a lot of entertainment in this chapter, some good labs, some other work as we're going. So to begin us off with chemical reactions, we're going to look at recognizing chemical reactions, or evidence of a chemical change that's occurring. We're going to look at representing chemical equa or reactions and equations, how to balance our chemical equations, and we're going to interpret chemical equations in terms of the number of relative substances involved. So, to begin with, a chemical reaction, process by which one or more substances are rearranged to form different substances. So anytime we take one or more substances, in this case, ammonium dichromate, we'll break down to nitrogen gas, water, and chromium oxide, as we're going, we're making different substances. So anytime a new or different substance is produced, we've had a chemical reaction. So lots of different chemical reactions or changes out there. You can check with your neighbors, check with anybody else who's going about ideas of chemical changes. But some of these are burning of wood. We have a different material afterwards. So anytime we have fire, we're going to notice that a chemical change has occurred. Silver tarnishing, over time it kind of begins to rust or to change. Ammonium nitrate exploding, I looked at a video earlier this year where they did some detonations of explosions. Digesting or decomposition of food, baking or cooking, all of those are examples of chemical change. You know if your car sits out in the parking lot and it rusts, changing to a new material, all of those are examples of chemical changes, different material being produced. So we're going to look at defining that. So evidence that a chemical change has occurred. So if you see one of these ideas, a chemical change has occurred. If the substance changes in color, if light is emitted or produced, if it changes temperature, so if it gets hotter or colder, if gas is produced, meaning if it bubbles, if a precipitate is formed, please make sure that when you put this one down, add in that a solid is formed from two solutions. So like we'll have two clear solutions, and a precipitate is the solid formed when those two solutions are mixed together. A new odor has to smell different than it did before. If you bake a cake, it smells different afterwards than when we started. That would be an example of a chemical change occurring. Uh, produces electricity would be another one. Chemical change occurring, probably like an example of that being a battery. So as we're going, we're going to start looking at writing our chemical reactions. First off, reactants. Reactants are what we start with. You're going to read down below just a little bit. Reactants are put on the left side of our equation. Products, substances that are going to be produced. They're formed during the reactants. So products are what we produce during a chemical reaction. So products are what are produced during a chemical reaction. They're on the right side of the equation. Now as we write our chemical equations out, a couple things we're going to look at. The plus sign separates reactants or separates products from products. So the plus sign would separate reactant 1 being added to reactant 2. The arrow is going to represent, separates the reactants from the products, and it says reacts to produce or yields are the two things that that arrow will say. So it's like reactant 1 plus reactant 2 reacts to produce product 1 and product 2. So we're changing to our new material. So our arrow sign here, or it could say yields, would be another way to say that. So that arrow separates the two. Couple general ideas that we're going to look at and need to know. So that table at the top of page two, our plus sign separates two reactants or products from each other or more. The arrow separates the reactants from the products a double arrow we'll look at later on separates reactants in a reversible reaction, meaning we could start the reaction going one way, and then later on we could turn around and make the reaction go back to the beginning. 
Not all chemical reactions are reversible, only certain ones are. And then a couple other symbols we're going to look at identifying. S stands for solid state. It'll be written behind as kind of a subscript. If a chemical is in its liquid state, L for liquid, in parentheses. G if it's in its gaseous state. And AQ is aqueous. And aqueous is describing that as we're going, that aqueous means that identifies water solution. Aqueous, it's dissolved in water. So you'll hear that a lot. Many of our substances are dissolved in water in order for a chemical reaction to occur. Now at the top of that page, just somewhere at the top margin, I'd like you to put this information above the chart on page 2. We have what are called our diatomic atoms. So at the top of page 2, somewhere above that chart, di stands for 2, atomic atoms. So two atoms that are going to bond together. Now the diatomic atoms I'd like you to put in are this list here. H2, N2, O2, F2, Cl2, Br2, and I2. These seven atoms always pair together in their pure form. So like oxygen we breathe is always O2, not just O, but O2. They always make a diatomic molecule. An example, if we were to put any of these together, as we're going fluorine, would look like this if we built it. So it's always stable paired together. So as we're going, what we're looking at, a couple ways to remember these seven. H.F. Clibron kind of sounds like a author's name or famous author. H.F. Clibron would give us our seven. The select seven on the periodic table, they make a group of one, two, three. We've got nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Looks like the number seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then on the other side of the periodic table, hydrogen gives a seven. Another way to remember that is to select seven. Those seven you are going to need to know. Know these ones. So now we're going to look at writing our word equations for chemical reactions. Word equations, statements that describe a chemical reaction using words, hence word equations. Skeletal equations are statements that describe a chemical reaction using chemical formulas and the symbols for states of matter. So now our chemical formulas, those are going to be the formulas that we've been writing and naming in the past, are going to continue to be seen. No balancing. That's going to be coming up later. So let's write out a word equation. It says in number 11, solid aluminum reacts with liquid bromine to produce solid aluminum bromide. Use the reaction to write our word equation. So we're going to start out. It says solid aluminum reacts with liquid bromine. So reacts with is we're going to be our plus to produce solid aluminum bromide. So to write this equation out, your word equation, aluminum plus bromine is going to produce aluminum bromide. So that's our general word equation. We don't need to put any of our solid or liquid information in there. Just aluminum plus bromine produces aluminum bromide. Now when it comes to our skeletal equation, that's when we're going to see solid our state of matter, liquid, and solids going to become important. Plus, we need to find out what our chemical formulas are. So aluminum bromide, aluminum, remember, aluminum is a plus 3. On the periodic table, bromide, a minus 1. So when you crisscross, aluminum bromide is going to be AlBr3. So for the skeletal equation, aluminum solid plus bromine liquid produces aluminum bromide.
Now remember, bromine is a diatomic, so it is always Br2. Aluminum solid, just the element and solid, plus reacts with bromine diatomic, so it's Br2, not just Br, and then parentheses L for liquid, to produce solid aluminum bromide, AlBr3 as a solid. So this will be the difference between our word and skeletal equations. That will allow you to begin writing our word equations. We'll pick up with starting our balancing equations after this, but we'll let you get started now.